Okay, for this lesson, we're going to look at while loops. So, firstly, while loop is part of iteration. Iteration is the repetition of a process or a section of program. So, when you, whenever you have a program that repeats, there is an iteration there. So, there are two two main types of iteration that you need to know about. Um, count controlled, which is a for loop, which we covered in previous lessons. So. This is it's called count control because you know the exact number of loops. If you do for x in range of 10, you know that you're going to be looping 10 times. If you do for x in range of 5, you're going to loop 5 times. So you already know the number of loops, which is why it's called count control. Then we have a while loop. So a while loop is another type of loop and it's called condition controlled. Now this is because it will loop depending on the condition. It will keep looping until that condition is met. For example, in this code, we've got, we're asking for hobby first, and then we're saying while the hobby is equal to football, so as long as the hobby is football, then the loop will happen. If the condition is true, the loop will happen. If it's false, it will not happen. So this will keep repeating as long as the user types football. So it will display, please don't enter football. Then it will ask them for a hobby again. And it will keep doing it and doing it and doing it until the user types anything other than football. Now, this with this, you don't know how many times it's going to loop. Maybe it will loop once. Maybe it will not loop at all. So because of this, it's called condition control because it will loop depending on that condition. You don't know the amount of loops that will happen. It will depend on how the user uses it. So this is what will be displayed in this example. And hobby equals football is the condition here. And you also need to remember to put a colon. So whenever you indent, so after you put the condition and a colon, everything that is indented is inside the loop. If it's not indented, it means it's not inside the loop. So this is indented, which means it's inside. Here is a flowchart for a simple while loop. So you've, you start and then you've got a condition. If the condition is true, you will do the task and the loop will start. And once the loop um, goes to the end, of, once it gets to the end of the loop, it will check for the condition again. If that condition is still true, it will keep looping and loop and loop and loop. It will only stop until that condition becomes false. When it's false, then it will break out of the loop. Here we have another example of a while loop. So we're saying name is equals to input. So we're asking for a name. Then we're saying while the name is not equal to so far, so as long as the user doesn't enter so far, then this will loop. So if the user enters any name, it will keep asking the question. It will only break until the user enters so far. When that happens, this condition becomes false. When the condition becomes false, it will display you are correct. Now you can see the last line, you are correct, is not indented which means that it's not inside the loop. So you are correct will only happen once. You can also use counters in uh, with a while loop. Now, these counters is really important, especially in the more difficult task where you have to count something. Uh, but this is just a simple example of how to use a counter. So you can create a variable. You can set it to one or zero. And normally people would set it to zero. Then you would count it. So you'll create a condition that will keep looping until that counter becomes false. So we're saying while the total is less than 5, so this is the condition. As long as the total is not is less than 5, then the loop will happen. So what will happen is that first the total is 0. So we'll print total, which is 0. Then total is equal to total plus 1. This, part, this code will increase or increment the total by 1. Then it will go to the start of the loop. It will check while total, which is now one, not zero, is less than five. Yes, true. So you do the loop again and again and again until it reaches four. So once it reaches four, it will display it. Then it will go to total equals total plus one. Then total becomes five. Five is not less than five. So this condition becomes false. And then it will finish the loop and goes to the end. Here is another example. So we can create a code to add to a specific total. So firstly, we set the total to zero. Then we're saying while total is less than or equal to 100, then we carry, we do the loop. So what will happen here is 
number is equal to int and then input. So we're asking the user for a number. Then we're adding that number to the total. For example, if you look here at the bottom in that um, code, which is which has been run, it says enter a number, we got 10. Then enter a number, we got 40. So 40 is then added to the total, which is 10. Then it says enter a number, 48. Now the total is for 98. Then enter number 5, total is 103. Now once the total becomes uh, is above 100, then that's when the condition becomes false and the loop will break. So this condition on line 2 will break, will um, become false and then it will break the loop. And then we have another example here. So we've got a variable that we can set to true. So true or false, this is a Boolean data type. So we've got a variable and I've set it to true. So this is mainly used to start your loop if you want to start the loop and then break it later on in the program. So to start the loop, you can do you can create a variable, you can set it to true, and then you do while start is equal to true. While start is equal to true, this condition is true. Because this condition is true, the loop will run. Now inside the loop, we're asking for a light color. So enter a traffic light color. Then when the user enters the color, it will go to the if statement. So if the light is equal to green, so if the light is green, we will display go, then we will set start to false. Now when we set start to false, this will break the loop. The loop will finish. But if it doesn't go to this if statement, so if they don't pick green, it will go to the else. Once it goes to the else, it will display wait, and then it will go back to the start of the loop. Start has not changed, start is still true. So we'll ask the question again for a traffic light color, and then it will check the if statement. So we'll keep looping until the user types green. And then it will display go, and then it will set start to false, which breaks the loop.